Hello and welcome to the Netherlands and uh, happy Easter Monday to you. Hope happy the, Easter? Yeah, hope the Easter bunny's been good to you. There was actually an Easter egg hunt out there. Yeah. Earlier. It's fantastic. We visited The Hague. It was <laughs> yes, all good. exactly. Uh, we're back for the second day of the Invictus Games from The Hague and we've got a cracking bank holiday show for you. We have. There's a lot coming up over the next hour. We'll have an exclusive interview with the Duke of Sussex. Now, you've probably seen pictures of him and the Duchess of Sussex cheering the competitors on from the stands. To be fair, they've been right in the thick of it, chatting to everybody and looking like they're having a lovely time. The atmosphere here in the Zouder Park is really building as we move into the week. And it's a bit like a family festival, isn't it? Yeah, that is a great way to describe it. And in fairness, people are sort of headed into some of the venues now, but during the day, this place is absolutely buzzing. It's lovely. There's sort of picnics, there's micro scooters everywhere. Bouncy castle. Yeah. She loves that. All of it. <laughs> right, well, we'll bring you all the latest action from the athletics track where uh, Team UK's wheelchair racers Dan Phillips and Mark Glockety uh, were getting ready to add to their medal tally. Yeah. Uh, and they'll be coming in here to talk to us later as well. Lovely. In fact, lots of Team UK will be racing to the studio to share their incredible stories. Now, what you can expect is hearing how the service personnel have battled against the odds with injuries and illness to make it to these games. And we'll also be meeting their friends and family who've been on that journey with them. So they're the team behind the team. But yes. first, it's been a long journey to The Hague for all of the competitors taking part. But despite two postponements and the pandemic, the fifth Invictus Games are finally here. And if London, Orlando, Toronto and Sydney are anything to go by, JJ, we are in for an exhilarating week of sport. You are the new generation of service and you are the role models to us all. A new generation, the Invictus generation. If you told me I was going to be out here this time last year, I would have said my chance. This is going to be goal for Luke Sinner, the man who learned to run again, has learned to live again. Sport gives me a reason to get up in the morning, it gives me a reason to go to bed at night. It's all over, Great Britain have won gold. Oh, oh my word. Look at that, she can hardly believe it. And he's going to win the gold medal, Mark Ormrod. I just feel incredible now. Great stuff from the big man. You are proving to the world that anything is possible. It's really just pushed me that little bit extra, and now I live life to the max. It's George's gold medal. And it looks like it is going to be gold for Emma Pack, and it is gold. I wish you all all the best of luck. And I hope you have a lot of fun. Yeah! Hey, calm down, calm down. We're brothers and sisters. We're teammates out in that battlefield, and that's really what matters the most. And it's a win for Team UK. They have beaten the United States. This is the spirit of the Invictus Games. Gold to Mike Gooding. What a great sum it is. They said it'd be easy, it's not. It's the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. David Weissman gets another goal. The UK team are nailing it out there today. And look at Edson stretching away from the field, and that's a great win. Yeah! This is the moment, right here, right now. This Invictus Games, it's about a sense of achievement. I went out there today and I wanted there. Who knows what the Invictus Games is going to go on to become, but from what I've seen today, why would this ever go away? Invictus, you are all winners. Wow, it's hard to believe that it is eight years since the first Invictus Games, and that back in 2014, that good looking guy with the beard there said. I don't think this will ever go away. <laughs> and, but that, it was meant to be a one-off. And I here know, we are. And here we fifth. are. All right, well, joining us now to reflect on the games and their impact is the founder, the Duke of Sussex, uh, and Team UK's Jill Charlton. Welcome, guys. Good to have you with us. <sighs> welcome. Hello. And, and welcome to The Hague. How's it been so far? Um, I, from my perspective, I think it's been great. We've got the weather in typical British style. We always start with the weather. <laughs> um, so we've got some sunshine throughout, which is wonderful. But, um, Joe, I think you and your family and the whole team has 
feeling pretty welcome here, right? We, we were told to expect it to be absolutely amazing and have a really warm welcome, but I couldn't have imagined that it would be this incredible. It's been absolutely wonderful so far. Now, in the opening ceremony, you pay tribute to, the, to Team Ukraine being in, in attendance. And obviously, it's not a full team. Does that make this year's games more poignant than ever, do you think? I think what people need to remember, or perhaps don't even know yet, is a vast majority of the Ukraine team was serving in some shape or form. So they removed their uniforms, put their team strips on, jumped on the coach, came over here, slept for a couple of days, tried to decompress, and then was straight into it. And then they've got to go back. So I think to have them here is extraordinary. Mm. Um, and that commitment that they've made yes. to leaving their country, which is a real hard thing for them to, 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 to decide to do, but it came with the president's blessing. Um, and I, think, I don't think this games could have been the games that it is without Team Ukraine. And of course, they've lost now four members of their community um, and one being their archery instructor, um, who you know, isn't here. He didn't make it, killed in action. So I think it really just brings it home to what is going on across Europe right now. Um, and you know, we've got over, over 500 competitors here with varying different stories and backgrounds, but ultimately we are all together in this. Yeah. You know? mm. And uh, it, you know what, it puts names and faces on statistics you know, yeah. and, and, and this, what we see. Um, your wife is here, the, uh, the Duchess of Sussex, as you say. Um, how is she enjoying it so far? Because she is very much part of this family now, isn't she? What do you think, Joe? You met her oh, yesterday. Oh, I think she's, oh, <laughs> she's so lovely. And I think she's really comes across as incredibly genuine. Mm. I think she really, we, we're all speaking about it as a team. You really know that both you and her really care about our stories <laughs> and really are there to support us. And yeah, she's just lovely. We met, we had Joe, we met, um, the three of us met in a tent. In typical British fashion, in the, in, in the in a cold morning, it was under, a lovely tent. Under a marquee tent, tea and coffee being served with the UK, with the UK team. It's We're what, better. It's what dreams are made of. We're better. Um, but I know that um, my wife had a special moment with you and another with, competitor. Yeah, with myself and Sarah Robinson, and mm. we're both breast cancer survivors. And we were talk. I was talking to you about it, and just the power of the power of sport in moving forward from um, breast cancer. Um, and yeah, and then I, and then we were speaking to your lovely wife about you know the after effects of cancer especially yeah. with breast cancer and the the sort of hormonal impact on the body and things like that and we had a lovely hug <laughs> Jill does power lift. i know i know so, so we tell. were having a chat jill weren't we <laughs> yeah and we were jill was saying literally never really swam n never rode or done any power lifting what does the invictus do for somebody like yourself who's been diagnosed with something that affects not just yourself but the entire family for me I thought that I was all right. I'm really upbeat about everything. I approached my cancer treatment the same. I blogged about it because I wanted to sort of raise awareness and let other people know what, what I was going through to try and help people. But afterwards, when all the fuss died down and I was sort of told, I was signed off by the oncology team and I thought, right, I'm going to go and I'm going to get fit again. I'm a soldier. This is my identity. I just couldn't do it. I felt really, really fragile. I felt really um, everything that happened to me, I thought my cancer was back. And then I found Invictus and I found this incredible community and all these people that really get it, not just the competitors, but the committee and the staff and, you know, Help for Heroes, the Royal British Legion, all that support that was out there. And I can honestly say that it's changed my life. It really has. We don't, it's a great leveller. You know, when I was crying at the edge of the swimming pool, daring myself to di dive in, and a double amputee hopped up on the blocks and, <laughs> and did a dive, I thought, well, what have you got to mourn about, yeah. Jill? And because the nature of, you know, the, the pandemic, and we thought we'd never get you at yeah. one point, did we? But here yeah. we are. Yeah. But next year, the games are going to come around quicker, because yeah. next year, it's in Dusseldorf in Germany. Mm -hmm. How excited are you about the future of the Games then? When you guys had asked me this right at the beginning, like, how long does this actually go on for? Yeah. The point that I made was it'll go on for as long as it, that it's carrying, yeah. or giving a, or there's, there's a, a purpose need. to it, or there's a need for it, yeah. right? Um, so I genuinely, after three years, I thought that we might be able to put it in a box, put it on a shelf, and just leave it until we would need to bring it out again. But with the state of the world right now, um, there's always going to be a need for it, yeah. as far mm -hmm. as I can tell. So, yes, in, in answer to your question, Alex, I think 
to know where we're going next is really exciting and to be able to have that forward-looking yeah. approach and I already know where we're heading in 2025 still still very much a secret and also we're constantly inviting new nations because you know this is about healing right and as the bigger teams US UK perhaps decrease in number it's going to provide an opportunity for more nations to come in who desperately need this opportunity and this and this place to, to, to heal together now on the way here you popped in to see Her Majesty the Queen did she have any nice messages for Team UK she had plenty of messages for Team UK, which I've already passed on to most of them. So, no, it was great to see her. I'm sure she'd love to be here if she could. Well, Duke of Sussex, Jill, thank you so much thank and you. good luck for the rest of the week. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Jill. Good luck. Thank you very much. Well, the athletics kick-started the week of sport here in The Hague. It's an event that Team UK had great success with back in Sydney, so the pressure was on. Yeah, another member of Team UK who took to the track was former Army medic and mum, Lisa Johnson. And here is her story. I joined the army in 2001 and I joined as a medic. I loved every minute of it. My injury occurred doing an assault course and when I jumped over something, I landed funny. Something didn't quite feel right and over the coming months, my foot was incredibly painful and I got a diagnosis of complex regional pain syndrome. It's a neurological pain condition that uh, amplifies pain. If my kids came running up for a hug, I'd be like, ugh! And I'd, I'd turn into monster mummy, and I'd be like, they were frightened of me because I couldn't control my reaction when they wanted a hug. I was devastated because this not is affecting me, it's affecting my family. Life with this pain wasn't worth living. And after two and a half years, the next pragmatic step was amputation. As soon as the, the leg was off, it was like, wow, just that pain had gone. Learning to walk was hard. It was really hard. And I need to push that a little bit further. So when I got the email to be picked for the Invictus Games, I was like, ah, this is amazing. It kind of gave me the extra kick up the bum to go back to the gym and keep trying and keep doing it. And it, oh, it's been amazing. And for my boys to see me run, oh, it's, it's going to be incredible because they've never seen me run. And I feel like they've missed out. So. That would be the icing on top of the cake, is for to see me run or plod. <laughs> they could probably still beat me. <laughs> well, we heard in the feature that Lisa Johnston was keenly anticipating taking to the track so that her boys could see her run, and she did just that in the IT7 200 metres. And above the knee amputee, the support Lisa received from her fellow athletes as she headed for the finish line embodied the spirit of the Invictus Games. Tears of joy as she receives a warm embrace from all of her rivals and terrific support from the fans in attendance. And in addition to the camaraderie that comes from taking part, Johnston also satisfied her competitive desire by claiming gold in the shot put. And the presentation party handing over her hard-won prize, the Duke of Sussex, the founder of the Invictus Games, sharing sentiments along with Megan, with an athlete whose participation epitomizes what it means to appear in the Invictus Games. Lisa Johnston's maiden appearance, a memorable one indeed. This, the women's IT7 200 meter final, an ambulant race for athletes with physical impairments not comparable with IT categories one to six. So we've got UK athletes in lanes three and four, Victoria Wales from Tyne Tees and Weir, Laura Powell of Wiltshire goes in lane four for Team UK. All eight lanes being used, although the fastest woman in qualifying Dawn Page is DNS, does not start. Up into her running quickly at the beep to start is Angela Euston of the United States of America. Birthday girl today, turning 30 years of age. And as we come around the crown of the bend into the straight, it's a terrific start by Emma Murfett of Australia. And she is leading the field. She's got the advantage of having them all in her sights. And my goodness, didn't she take them down? But closing with every stride is the ex-Air Force veteran, Lisa McCraney. McCraney and Murfett fighting for the finish line. Murfett trying to hold her off. McCraney closing, and it's a photo finish on the line. Such was their desperation to cross the tape in first place that they literally threw themselves across the finish line. It's going to take a photo to sort it out. 
Wow, what a finish. And it's not that we want to see the athletes fall, but we do love seeing that sort of commitment. And every sprinter will know that feeling at the end of the race when your brain is saying go faster, but your legs are swimming in lactic and all you can do is hurl yourself across that line. Well, even the finish replays not giving a clear indication as to who has prevailed. Wonderful to see that camaraderie between athletes who are rivals in their battle for the finish line. And it's McCraney who has been given it by two one hundredths of a second over Emma Murphy, the longtime race leader. Shante Gonzalez rounding out the podium. Victoria Wales in fifth, Laura Powell in seventh for Team UK. There's a lineup for the men's IT4 200 meter final. This a race for athletes who use wheelchairs with limited leg function with the presence of some to full trunk control. Julian Allen of Team UK starts in lane six. Patrick Levis. Canada will be on the inside, racing out of lane four. Well, there is Julian Allen, 53 years of age, the former private in the army. You can see the lanes being used, lanes four through seven. And it's a good, clean start. And what a start by the athlete on the inside, Patrick Levis, powering around the straights, already taking the stagger on the athletes on his outside. And now he has got Garrett Kawada of the United States in his sights and as he swings into the home straight Patrick Levis with a real statement of intent leaving the rest of the field trailing in his wake Garrett Kawada the ex-Air Force veteran from Honolulu of the United States trying to remain with him but it's all Patrick Levis just swaying to the outside of the lane maybe breaching the line a little bit but gaining no material advantage a dominant display from gun to tape, arms extended as he crosses the line. Patrick Levis taking that Canadian flag in acknowledgement of what was a brilliant piece of racing to take in Victus Games gold. Absolutely sensational start and the control that he demonstrated carried him through to the finish line in dominant fashion. Wonderful moment for Julian Allen crossing the line and after being inspired to join the Invictus movement after watching the program from his hospital bed well what a wonderful moment for him to be an Invictus Games athlete. One of the challenges of a 200 compared to a 100 is you're starting on a curve and it's not easy to accelerate around the bend and often the question is how do they keep their chairs on a curve and it's a compensator. Uh, we can see here that Levis is powering away. He's showing excellent technique, especially for someone who's new to the world of para sports. It's not easy changing from using your legs to using your arms. Well, there's the moment of celebration for Patrick Levis. And what a wonderful moment for Julian Allen, inspired to become a Team UK athlete after watching previous editions of the Invictus Games. And here he is participating. And participation, a key component for all Invictus Games athletes. For Patrick Levis, he's come away with top spot on the podium and Invictus Games gold. In late four, representing the United States of America, it's just So there's the lineup for the IT8 final in the 200 meters, a race for men. Four athletes taken to the field, including Kristen Morris from the United States. She out of competition. More on that in a moment. On the inside in lane four is Joshua Smith, impressive winner in the 1500 meters yesterday. There's the silver medalist from yesterday's 1500, Daniel Phillips. Mark Cloherty took a bronze in the 1500 yesterday. And Kristen Morris, not enough athletes in her category in order for there to be a field. But having traveled all this way and trained so hard, the Invictus Games organizers wanting to ensure that Kristen Morris of the United States has a race. And so she out of competition a good clean start then in the it 200 meter final for men and what a blistering start by mark clarity flying around that top end and punching those wheels in furious fashion the 49 year old former corporal in the army from belfast is leaving the rest of this field trailing in his wake and look at that overhead shot giving you a clear idea of how efficiently he is negotiating that turn kristen morris punching hard but away and clear and powering toward the finish line is mark clarity for team uk Head down, front wheel rising, he's putting so much power through the rear wheel, but he's maintaining his form, maintaining his focus, and stopping the clock in 37.7 seconds for a magnificent Invictus Games gold. In second place was Joshua Smith. 
this was a dominant display from Clarity. We saw yesterday in the 1500 Smith dominate, but that was about endurance. This was about power. And I actually watched a video of Clarity training. He was doing 10 and 20 meter hill sprints, which means you're having to put extra power up that hill and it definitely paid off. Terrific support from the crowd and the Invictus Games spirit evident in the celebrations. A terrific performance by Mark Clarity. Both Clarity and Phillips should be incredibly proud. They made that 200 meters look very easy. So much is going on there in terms of chair control and power generation and getting your equipment sorted. And friends and family watching know how hard they have worked and how hard that was, especially during lockdown. It's a great moment for both of them. Ah, brilliant. Congratulations to them both. But well, Mark is such a beast, just absolutely powerhouse, tearing isn't that he? powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, and we will be hearing from him later in the show as well, which is exciting. Uh, but now, former Welsh guardsman uh, Craig Godsall uh, was also competing in the 100 metres. Now, the world of athletics has played a huge part in his recovery. Hours of training have helped Craig to get to the start line here in The Hague, along with his admiration for a certain golden girl from London 2012. Don't tell them who it is. No spoilers. Before I joined the army, um, I did athletics, I ran for South East Wales. I used to like watching Jessica Ennis, who's like a kind of sporting idol. In 2012, I joined the Welsh Guards and it's an experience I wouldn't change. I was out in Kenya and doing the jungle warfare as part of the machine gun platoon. With all the excess weight that we were carrying up and down in the mountains, um, it started putting pressure on my discs. Me being stubborn, wouldn't go sick, just push through. And it got to a point about a couple of months later on runs that I couldn't feel my right leg. Then I found out that I had disintegrated discs in my L4 and L5, which led then to my uh, medical discharge in 2017. Leaving the army did affect my uh, mental health, uh, which then caused me to try and um, end everything. So the Invictus um, has given me pretty much a second life. The band is back there again with like the military feel. It's a new source of friendship as well. So, like they say, being in the army is a friend for life. And we've got that here, I think. Doing the trials um, in Sheffield, Jessica Ennis was there and was like having that full circle of where I was back in 2012 beforehand doing athletics, watching her on the telly and she was there giving me the medal. So it's kind of like, how has this happened? <laughs> Ah, oh, that is lovely how he feels the circle is complete, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and, and what struck me, though, was that when, when he talks about how he acquired his injury and then he had sort of cracked on with it because he didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to yeah. speak up. If you think if that's, if that's how you, you know, you think about your physical injury, then what, what hope do you have about speaking about your mental health problems? True. But actually, you know, what, they're one and the same. You need to be open and honest hand, about them. They yeah. yeah. <sighs> Well, as we heard, Craig has managed to turn his life around after going through such a tough time. But for many others, their mental health struggles remain. For more information and advice on getting the mental health support that you or somebody you know needs, head to bbc.co.uk slash action line. Now, we know how much competing here means to Craig, so now let's find out how he got on in his final. Steph Reid and Ronald McIntosh were back in the commentary box for us. This, the men's IT7 100 meter final, all eight lanes in use. On the inside is Andrew Holiday, who won the 200 meters earlier on in really impressive fashion. Raphael Morfin and CISO of the United States took silver in the half lap event. Craig Godsall goes in lane number eight. Godsall, who received his medal from the Invictus Games trials from his athletics hero Jessica Ennis. There in lane five is Matthew Cable. He completing the clean sweep for the United States by finishing third in the 200 meters earlier. Good clean start in his IT7 100 meters and Matthew Cable has taken off like a rocket, powering his way down the track. But now Holiday on the inside begins to respond and he's eating up the track. So too is Morphin and CISO and it's going to be Andrew Holiday first, Morphin and CISO second, Cable in third. It's another United States clean sweep. And just as they did in the 200 meters, I think they have taken the first four places because Jacob Anthony held off Craig Godsall to finish in fourth, to make it a one, two, three, four for the United States of America. 
and a sprint double completed by Andrew Holiday. Holiday dominated in the 200 meters, but the difference between the 100 and the 200 is the start. And his teammates, Cable and Morphin and CISO, certainly gave him something to aim at. But ultimately, smooth, efficient technique won. We have a great shot there of Craig Godsell showing off his technique as well. Jess Ennis certainly would have been proud. One, two, three, USA! USA indeed, four athletes entered and they occupy the first four places. Andrew Holiday completing a magnificent sprint double. And look at that, only two men went below 13 seconds in qualification, but with the adrenaline pumping with Invictus Games gold on the line, four men breaking the 13 second barrier. Craig Godsall, a terrific performance in his first Invictus Games appearance, coming away with fifth place in a time of 13.01. In the mixed IF8 open category shot put, Shane Russell dominated the competition. The former British Army sergeant surpassing 10 metres with each of his six efforts, his best coming in round one, 10 metres 70 securing gold. Joining Russell on the medal rostrum was athletics captain Charlie Dye, the 37-year-old former firefighter in the RAF, saving his best for last with a round six mark of 9 metres 74, a competitive effort to claim Invictus Games bronze. The lineup for the men's IT8 100 meter final. For seated athletes who do not meet the minimum eligibility criteria for categories IT4 and 5. Lanes 2 through 8 in use. There's Joshua Smith, winner of yesterday's 1500 meters. In lane 2, Kristen Morris is the outermost athlete in lane 7. And what an atmosphere. The fans down the home straight really energizing the athletes. And Ukraine receiving plenty of support. So let's go through the athletes then. There is Joshua Smith, 45 years of age, competed in Sydney four years ago and took four silver medals on the track in IT4, including in the 100 meters. Mark Cloherty, such an impressive winner of the 200 meters earlier on. David Dewar, 54 year old from Hertfordshire, keen rugby player away from the Invictus Games. Said hi. Priyad Kal, what an ovation for the athlete representing Ukraine. Daniel Phillips of Great Britain is in lane six. And Kristen Morris, female racer, not part of the competition, but because there are so few athletes in the classification for women, she wouldn't have been able to race. And so the Invictus Games administrators using their discretion to ensure that she can get some competition by competing in this men's event. So a good clean start. Priyad Kal has been left somewhat behind, but no such problems for the two athletes from the UK powering out in front. It's neck and neck so far between Cloherty and Daniel Phillips, but now Cloherty beginning to find his rhythm and in stark contrast, Phillips has just lost his momentum a little bit, but look at Mark Cloherty powering through the line. Coming up on the inside is Joshua Smith. It's a photo between second and third. I think Daniel Phillips managed to hold off the hard charging Joshua Smith, but Mark Cloherty making it a sprint double, taking the 100 meters in dominant fashion to add to the 200 meter crown he won earlier. But we are getting treated to some really high quality wheelchair racing. Now the 100 meter wheelchair sprinting is all about efficient transference of power from your body into your chair and everything matters from equipment to pushing technique, which Clarity has just given us a world-class demonstration of that and your choice of tires, your helmet even, it all matters. So a brief consultation between the athletes who were in a photo finish for second and third, my instinct is that it was Phillips who crossed the line in second place. And there is confirmation by four one hundredths of a second, Daniel Phillips edging out Joshua Smith, but Mark Cloherty completing a magnificent sprint double, the man for whom sport has been such a key part of his recovery from PTSD. After witnessing the turmoil and tumult of the Iraq war back in 2003. It took a long time for him to get diagnosed, but sport a key part of his recovery. 
brilliant results. results. Uh, Mark, second gold. Well, he'll have excess baggage going on <laughs> yeah. this route, won't he? And we'll chat to him in a minute. Shane, who was in here yesterday, oh, secures his first gold of the well. games as well. Yeah. And Craig, you know, congratulations to him on fifth. People go on and on, don't they? You know, how taking part is what's important. And it's never been more relevant than here at the Invictus Games. Yeah, the thing is about setting what, what your idea of success is and working towards that. And, and actually, it's not even just about this one week. It's mm. everything that, that everyone has been through to even make it to the start line then you do your race and then the finish line is actually the start of your your life beyond and the this journey game. beyond and that, yeah. so it's about what came before and crucially what comes after well we've heard about it talked about so many times at these games from Prince Harry to members of Team UK the support of friends and family is at the heart of the competitors journey to The Hague yes as Paralympian Steve Brown found out there's also the life and soul of this party The Invictus Games can be life-changing for the competitors, but its reach goes far beyond just those taking part. She's amazing. She, her injury, it doesn't slow her down, doesn't stop her. She does everything. She chucks herself into everything. It was just so, I was just so happy when like, she wasn't giving up, because like, her injury didn't stop her. Representing the United Kingdom, Lisa Johnston. And when everyone went to help her, it made me happy. It's about far more than just the competitors. The great thing is, all the families get a chance to have a go at the sports too. Everyone supports everyone. It's just the fact you're here. We all have something in common. And all the kids understand having a parent or two parents that have an injury, uh, like be it mental or physical, and we can all like get along with each other. Yeah. It doesn't really matter about the age here. You're talking to anyone from be it a toddler to my dad's age, you know? Just about everyone, so it's great. <laughs> Go on, Barnaby, you're thirsty. Feel better for that? Are you ready to talk to me now? Dad did archery today. Uh, he came 22nd or something out of 42. Does it matter? So, no, we're so proud of him every day. Really good. <laughs> Who are you here supporting? Um, my dad. Yeah, and your dad. Do you know what sports he's doing? Yeah, rowing, fox and volleyball. Ready, steady. Yeah, great catch. The main purpose of us being here is to show our mum on in all our sports. But then there's also the fact of feeling welcomed in other aspects. We can just do stuff like this. We are so proud of you, mummy. Keep going, we love you, never give up. Yeah. Do you know I like you doing sim volleyball? Also, um, I'm proud of you for doing it. Did your dad make you proud? Yeah. What is it that makes you so proud of your dad? Um, because he's so good. And I can see why he got chose to be captain for rugby. Do you want to grow up to be like your dad one day? Yeah. And what qualities, what is it about your dad that make you want to be like him? Because he's fast on his wheelchair and he's fun. Dad, I am amazingly proud of you. I love you, Dad. Oh my goodness, I can't, I can't cope. Should I take it's this for a second? Cute. <laughs> too cute. Do you know what I love about it, in fairness, is that it's, it's their moment of celebration as well. Absolutely. And the fact that they can come here and just get stuck into it and yeah. have a go. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've got more Invictus Games family joining us now. Team UK's Russell Hunt and his son Logan and wife Hayley. Welcome, good to see Hello. you. Has Hi. it been a good day at the park? It's been a brilliant day so far. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, Russell, let's start with you. Because, oh, I mean, like many, many of the competitors here, you've had such a long journey. Yeah. And you've really worked on your mental health. Yeah. And the Invictus, I suppose, is like the cherry on top of the cake, isn't it? Completely. You know? It's brilliant to be here. Because it's really helped you. But how does it feel then, come in here and being able to compete and seeing your boy and your wife in the stands? It, 
there aren't really words that, like all of us, the competitors here, you know, our injuries are, are visible or maybe not so some as visible, but they've been along there with us all the way. You know, they they've got their own scars from our injuries and putting up with what we've had to go through. So it's a, as much as much for them as it is for us, and yeah. it's it yeah. There are no words to see them. Just see them there looking at you and watching how far you've come from where, where, wherever you started on your journey to where you are now here. And Logan, you're 16. Yeah. And I suppose, you know, during the 16 years, obviously, you, you know, you've seen your dad and he's struggled a bit. How does it feel for you then, as his son, to see him out there competing with all these other incredible competitors? It feels amazing. All the help that he's gotten with Invictus, our relationship's really really changed it's really positive now Has it's it? much better than what it was are before. you closer do you feel we're much closer yeah it's, it's truly amazing that's lush and you know what he's a superhero as we all know <laughs> and he's competing in many many events what are you really looking forward to seeing? um wheelchair rugby <gasps> the most yes it's a bit <laughs> rough mind yeah. i mean they go for it don't you Got to. <laughs> Absolutely. And Hayley, for you, I mean, you say that the support has really increased in terms of support for families like yourself who've been definitely. dealing with, let's say, lots of black clouds along the way. Yeah, definitely. I think being welcomed into the Invictus family, not just for the competitors, but for sort of us behind the scenes, absolutely helps everybody, hearing everybody's story and what they're all going through brings us all together. You don't feel alone. Yeah. Um, and after such a long, long time, it's really nice to feel like you belong somewhere and that you're not just out on your own fighting it every yeah. day. Um, so for us as the family, yeah, meeting all the competitors, other family, family members, is just, that's the best bit for us. It's like having an extended family, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Now, speaking of which, there is another member of your family. Yeah. 18 month old, or 17 months, yeah. to be exact. <laughs> little Reed. Now, where's Little Reed at the minute? He's being fed out the back snack by lovely Kim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was desperate, him, I was to desperate to get to him on the show, but they were like, no, too yeah, much he's, jeopardy. Yeah, he's tired, he's been up early, going at it all day, of every course. day. And all the competitors literally treat him like they're, they're his own, you know, they're all playing with him, running after him, talking to him, so. Yeah, I, I hope he remembers some of it, something from it. And the lovely thing, in years to come, you'll be looking back at photos of 2022 mm -hmm. here in The Hague, and he'll understand what it was all yeah. about. It's Definitely. so lovely to talk to you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great week. Oh, wonderful. Uh, well, Team UK Spencer Bull is here also with his three sons, Charlie, AJ and Tom, who have shot up since we last saw you guys in Sydney. <laughs> um, Spencer, I mean, we go way back, pal. Well, and and, and, and um, I bumped into you in the park earlier, indeed. and I'm going to steal a line off you, sorry, but you said it was like, a, a, arriving here was like coming to Glastonbury. <laughs> like, this is like a festival, isn't it? It is. Well, the weather is amazing. <laughs> well done, the Netherlands, for arranging that. Absolutely amazing. What they've done is superb. Coming into the the village, it's, it is just like a festival. The thing that really sticks out for me is, you know, over the two years we've been training, extended through COVID, um, this is the first time we bring the families together. They're team behind the team, if you want. Yeah. So actually, it's, they can now start joining in and actually we can thank them for all the support they've given to us. Yeah. Which is brilliant. And the other thing, AJ, is that you can get stuck in. We saw you in the VT there, like having a go at some of the sports, doing the sitting volleyball. But also, how, how much does it mean to be able to meet other families and sort of share your experiences yeah. with one another? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, that is one of the most important parts of the whole Invictus Games is it, it's about the athletes yeah. and it's about the family and friends. You know, Harry was talking about it on the opening ceremony. Um, it's it's not about the medals, you know, everyone keeps saying it and it's true. It's just about, you know, it's, as they were saying, it's like an extended family almost, you know, you just understand each other. Tom, uh, we can see, you know, where your dad is now. And as I say, I've known him a long time. Yeah. Can you give us an impression, though, of, of how this has changed his life, sort of where he was and, you know, where he is now? Well, yeah, pre his disability, dad was a really active person and he loved his rugby. Um, but when he got diagnosed with MS, he just, he gave up. 
and the Invictus Games has given him that drive um, to start swimming and to play archery again. And we've all seen a positive change in him because of it. Yeah. And I mean, Charlie, he's been in action already, but he's got the swimming coming up. Are you excited about that? Oh, yes. We're getting up nice and early tomorrow to catch the start of it. <laughs> Um, support not just him but every other competitor there. Yeah, and, and Spence, what does it mean though to you to, to, to have you know the boys here and, and share this experience with them? It's fantastic. I mean, uh, as a dad, you want to be able to kick the ball around with the kids in the in the garden. I have not been able to do that. So to bring them here rather than sat on the sidelines to actually be doing something and actually things like swimming, I can carry on swimming afterwards when I get back home with the kids. That's brilliant. Brilliant, honestly, it's so good to see you doing so well, guys. Have the best time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much to you all and have a great week. Now, another member of Team UK who can't wait for his friends and family to see him compete is Dan Tasker. Like so many at the Games, Dan has struggled with both a physical injury and his mental health. Before we head back to the stadium for our last few finals on the track, here's Dan's story. For me, athletics is an escape from everything that I'm, I'm struggling with, everything that I'm dealing with. It's me on the track or on the road, and that's it. The RAF was my life. My role within the Air Force was a survival equipment technician, so I, I enjoyed the variation that my job and my role gave me. In 2013, I, I injured my left hand and wrist. I was working in the life raft base. It was a very, very manual job. And I reached the point where it became very, very painful to put any weight through my wrist. Then I had a wrist reconstruction operation, and it's never been the same since. I couldn't hold a weapon. I couldn't be deployed anywhere. I couldn't hold a knife and fork as I progressively got worse. In 2018, I was medically discharged from the Air Force due to my injury. It destroyed me, basically. Um, it affected my mental health. Um, it affected my family life. There was a lot of myself that I lost. The Invictus journey has, has been incredible. It's boosted my confidence. It's made me feel proud of myself again. It's given me that feeling of self-worth. I, I just want to put my best self forward. Um, I want to come away with personal bests. It's not necessarily for me, it's not about winning medals, it's just, it's, it's about the journey and, and enjoying the experience. And I feel in turn, I feel that I'm somebody that my family and my son can be proud of again as well. Daniel Tasker, the former RAF corporal from Lincolnshire, stepped onto the track to run in the IT7 400 metres. And his appearance for Team UK, a significant staging post in his ongoing recovery after the challenger's experience following his medical discharge. And what a prominent role sport has played in that ongoing recovery. So much so that he hopes to compete for Lincolnshire Wellington Athletics Club in the 400 and 1500 after the Invictus Games. The lineup for the men's IT7 400 meter final. This an ambulant race for athletes with physical impairments not compatible with categories IT1 to 6. So Gary Callier, the former Lance Corporal in the Army, started his Invictus Games journey isolated from family, friends and life, saying that the Invictus Games has really helped him with his ability to engage. There is Fred Lewis of the United States of America in lane two, the second fastest man in qualification earlier on. And he has a slight advantage in that being on the inside, he will be able to keep the rest of his rivals in his sights. So a good clean start in this men's IT7 400 meter final. And Fred Lewis in lane two for the United States of America has gone off very quickly indeed, as has his compatriot Jacob Anthony in lane five. Coming into the back straight, it is a blistering start by Fred Lewis of the United States in lane number two. But Andrew Holiday, look at that short chopping stride as he attempts to eat up the stagger on his rivals. Now the 400 meter is an all out sprint where you have to pace yourself, which is a little bit like someone asking you to whisper as loud as you can. And it is going to come down to who judges this right. Just a bit of a grimace on the face of Rafael Monfenciso as the athletes come into the home straight. Andrew Holiday who's taken Invictus Games gold in the one and the two, trying to remain in contention and also looking strong. 
is Jacob Anthony. But look at the response from Fred Lewis on the inside. Going with him is Rafael Monfensiso. It's Monfensiso and Lewis. And Lewis takes it on the line. Monfensiso second. And Jacob Anthony crossing the line in third to finally get himself an Invictus Games medal here at The Hague after finishing in fourth place in the one and the two in an American one, two, three, four. But there we have brothers in arms behind mirrored lenses, the gold and silver medalist in the men's IT7 400 meters. Fred Lewis taking gold, Rafael Monfensiso second, and Jacob Anthony getting himself a bronze. No matter how fit you are, racing a 400 meters always hurts, but it feels so good when you get this race right. So the athletes taken to the track to contest the women's 400 meter final in the IT7 category. This for athletes with physical impairments not compatible with categories IT1 to 6. Well, there is Jessica Garneau, the 41 year old, retired corporal from the Canadian Army, second in the 1500 meters yesterday to this woman, Sally Renard, the 46 year old former corporal in the RAF from Hampshire looking to secure another place on the medal rostrum in this, the one-lap sprint event, the women's IT7 400-meter final. Jessica Garner with her focus fixed as she awaits the starter's beeper. So they get away first time. Pretty even around this first bend, everybody looking relaxed. We've got the gold and silver medalist from the 200 meters earlier on. Lisa McCraney took gold, she's on the inside in lane two. And Emma Murphy of Australia losing out in a photo finish. She goes in lane number five. Based on the heats, five athletes will be in the mix for a podium finish. And Team UK's Sally Renard is one of them. Now she's in the outside lane and for some, some athletes find it quite scary not to see their competitors, but for others, it actually frees them to run their own race. Well, there's a woman who's certainly running her own race, Jessica Garneau, looking incredibly relaxed, shoulders down, keeping her form magnificently, just a little bit of a grimace, but she's leading the field as she heads into the home straight. Looking incredibly comfortable, Jessica Garneau, maintaining her form, keeping those arms driving, just beginning to feel the inevitable pain of a 400 meters now, but look at her determination to cross the finishing line, kept her arms pumping all the way. It's Garneau first, McCraney second comes away with silver. It's gonna be a battle for third place and Sally Renard crosses the line just ahead of Emma Murphy to add Invictus Gaines bronze to the gold she won in the 1500 yesterday. Oh, what a brilliant bronze from Sally. We saw her insurance in the 1500. We saw it again and cheering on Joanne Bradley as she crosses the line. Brilliant racing from all of the women. And there's a reason why Jessica Garneau is smiling as she's crossed that line because she smashed her time in the heats by over four seconds. Brilliant run from her. Great way to close out her day at the athletics. Oh, what a great shot of Sally there with her two training partners. She was saying she pushed one daughter in the buggy and one rode beside her on the bike. And there they are off to the medal ceremony with their mom. There's the lineup for the IT8 400 meter final for men. Kristen Morris taking part as an out of competition athlete for the United States of America. Not enough female athletes in her own category. So the administrator just allowing her to get out on the track and race, having traveled this tremendous distance. There's Joshua Smith, her compatriot, 1500 meter champion. After a terrific performance where he led from practically gun to tape yesterday, Daniel Phillips, silver medalist behind Joshua in that 1500 meters. And on the outside is Mark Clarty from Belfast. What an outstanding Invictus Games he has had to this point gold in both the one and the 200 meters. So they get away first time, a good clean start in this IT8 400 meter final for men. And just beginning to pull away from Kristen Morris is Joshua Smith coming around the first bend and into the back straight, also beginning to make his speed and power tell. Negotiating that turn is Mark Clarty on the outside. So it's Clarty and Josh Smith who are making moves. 
Oh, now you can see Daniel Phillips there working hard to get his chair to behave. I think runners often take steering for granted, but it's not easy. Racing chairs are wide, the lanes are narrow, and there is little margin for error. So off the back straight and into the final bend, Mark Cloherty maintaining his form magnificently and negotiating the bend very well indeed. Pushing hard, maintaining his focus, but he will be feeling the presence of Joshua Smith on his inside. And right on cue, Joshua Smith looking to swing into the home straight, carry his momentum with him and trying to close the distance. But Mark Cloherty maintaining his form magnificently. But Joshua Smith continuing to push, looking to close the gap. And he appears to be doing so with each and every punch of those wheels. Cloherty, though, finds another gear and responds again. Cloherty crosses the line in first. Is Joshua Smith in second? A magnificent magnificent sprint treble for the man from Belfast in Victor's Games gold in the 100, 200 and now 400 meters. And how about that for a show of Invictus Games spirits from Daniel Phillips, allowing Kristen Morris to cross the line ahead of him. He was encouraging her coming around the track and there you see the camaraderie that runs through the entire court of the Invictus Games. Oh, it's a great close up shot there. Some very high tech carbon fiber wheels. Wheelchair racing is a little bit like Formula One racing where equipment matters. And this is the two athletes fighting it out to the line. I was so excited for this one because there's a great crossover in the 400 between power and endurance. And I was curious to see which athlete's physiology would win out. So a magnificent moment for Mark Cloherty. He and his wife became grandparents in July of last year. And how about that respect? between all of the competitors who took to the track in this IT8 400 meter final. So there's confirmation of a magnificent sprint treble from Mark Cloherty adding Invictus Games 400 meter goal to the one and the two already secured. We've got some guests here and they're watching themselves back and watching their faces is absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, right. And it has been two brilliant days of athletics, of course. So we are thrilled to be joined by three members of Team UK uh, who are out on the track. <laughs> Dan Phillips, Mark uh, Cl 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 Clockerty uh, and Laura Powell. Sorry, I put my tongue back in. Um, <laughs> Dan, you've been a busy man. Uh, medals around your neck, but also one of them missing, I believe, as well. Or not uh, missing. Was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's been an incredible day. I was so tempted to ask your makeup artist to draw eyes. On, the, on my eyelids. <laughs> well, they could at least done something with my hair. <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, it's been incredible. Um, uh, absolutely amazing. Um, but, yeah, um, was it uh, Kristen Morris? Yeah. She, because she had to move categories, yeah. um, because there was no other female athletes to compete with her, she competed with us. Um, so it was amazing to, to be able to to reward her with yeah. it because because she really really earned it. She worked so hard today. It yeah, was, it was yeah. She's see. she's competing out of competition as you say because there wasn't a category for her. Essentially, uh, an American athlete and and yeah. now you know got a medal to take home to the family. Yeah, yeah. Johnny, she yeah. has. It was so good to see her face. It's you so so beaming and happy. See, you've got a bronze, a silver, and a heart of gold. Ah, <laughs> this one. There you go. You can have that one. Now then, Mark, well, you're like the cat who got the cream over there. The three <laughs> gold medals. I mean, how were you feeling? And did you ever think, you know, on the road to Invictus when you were training, did you ever think that you'd be sitting here with three gold medals? Not in a million years, no. And how does it feel? It's amazing, but I don't look at them as medals for me. I look at them more as medals for my family, for what they've gone through for the last, pretty much the last... 19 years with my yeah. cancer, my PTSD, and then the injury it effectively led to me being in a, a racing wheelchair and on a handbike. Wow. So it's, it's, these are for them, not for me. Uh, and, and we saw the most beautiful images of, of your family. I mean, how special did that feel for Jennifer there? That that's makes it worthwhile, that does. Really? Every, every bit of it. All the training, the hard work. Yeah, the stuff that we don't see. Yeah, the, that, the, that's, the what it, that's what it was for. That's what that when is. I struggled, that was the thing that made me get up and go into the, the, the gym or into the sitting room or onto the rollers was, right, I've got to do it for them. I don't want to let them down because they've done a, more than enough for me over the last mm. lot of years. So it was my way of saying, right, I'm going to do something for them and put a smile on their face. 
Do you know, Mark, we, we've spoken so much about family tonight on this show. And, and Dan, for you as well, you know, you've said that part of the recovery for you and part of the joy of Invictus is having your sons here to finally see you doing what you've been working towards. How important is it to have Harry and Max, your boys, here? Uh, it's so incredibly important. They're my world. They really are. It's so, so amazing. Um, but the biggest thing is for me is to inspire them to, to take part in sports and, and just generally live in life to its fullest. Uh, and uh, Harry's already turned around to me and said, Dad, I want to be in the Olympics when, I be, when I'm older. Brilliant. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's incredible. But it's... Laura, I mean, speaking of inspiration, you, you've taken part in the one and 200 metres here. What, what inspired you or who inspired you to, to get into Invictus? Um, I followed the Invictus Games for a lot of years from Toronto when one of the previous uh, UK athletes I met on detachment, um, Michelle Turner, I seen her struggling at the side of the pool and yeah. like the, the personality that she still had that I knew of her that had been poorly. Uh, so yeah, I seen her doing her her thing, giving her all, um, and then following that, going into Sydney, our captain Rach. Uh, we both started the Sydney process uh, many years ago, um, and uh, she carried on. And I, I decided it wasn't it wasn't ready for me yet. And then I rolled into right. Maybe the next time was the time for me. So when the Hague was announced, after watching how they had progressed and moved and, and bettered themselves, I then chose to that it was my time to give it a go. We'll see. And what you've done, you, you've chosen specific events, really, haven't you, that will aid your recovery. Now, if you could give um, our lovely viewers at home an idea of what you've been through and how the events that you've chosen have helped. Yeah, so I picked um, top-to-toe sports that would help with my rehabilitation, my recovery, um, and the whole point of Invictus is to help you see beyond what's happened in the past or where you are now and be able to move looking forward. So I, um, in 2014, I sneezed and broke my rib and found out that I had a tumour. So from there, I had to have some surgery, uh, which put me on the back foot mentally as well as physically, uh, and then discovered that the cancer had come back again. So where it had been operated on my right-hand side, it was then again on, in my body on my left-hand side. So I became uh, weaker, um, balance became affected a lot because of everything within my core. Yeah. So anything that I could pick that was going to be initially hard was going to be hard, but to help. So the power lifting. <laughs> yes. The one. That's my your goodness, advice. You've really gone <laughs> yeah. for it. Yeah. That's oh. the newbie. Oh, incredible. Well, thank you so much, guys. Yes. It's just, you know, it's so great to see you in the studio, see those smiles on your faces. Uh, and it's only And more two. competing exactly. still to come, so good luck. Yeah. We want to see more medals. Exactly. <laughs> we'll try. Uh, just before we go, though, you want to have a look at this. These are the pictures of Carlo Calgani, uh, who won the men's IT1 400 metres. Now, he's an honoured Italian officer and a multiple Paralympic gold medalist. And he even had a documentary made about him, his life back in 28 called I Am the Colonel. Uh, he served in the International peace mission in the Balkans in the in 1990 uh, in the 90s uh, but he became seriously ill after breathing metal uh, powders uh, he's had treatment in Herefordshire to manage his condition but these pictures show the determination that is just so typical of these Invictus games wow it's powerful stuff we've yeah. seen there isn't it well that is all we've got time for today thanks to all the members of Team UK and their brilliant family and friends as well yeah tomorrow we'll be back at 7pm on BBC One uh, when we'll bring you the slides and the spikes that's how it's done uh, from the sitting volleyball uh, uh, and the medal matches uh, we'll also find out how the Team UK have been hitting the targets in the archery we will see you then have a lovely evening goodbye now yeah. good night <laughs>